we've already seen it out on the court in the first few minutes. The point guards are so key. These pretty boys out there in transition. Phil Pressy, son of an NBA star. Larry Drew, the second, son of an NBA star and coach now. And then up front, the finisher, Lawrence Bowers, who's also already come up with some very creative and imaginative plays. And then Shabazz Muhammad, the guy who's been throwing down in transition. The guy who's got the, the foot and the pressure of expectations. There's been so much placed on him. It's all going to happen for them. They have to have those finishers. And in Bowers from South Memphis, this grew up idolizing Penny Hardaway. He's become a mentor. Penny has two more Bowers. It's showing tonight. Shabazz Muhammad, nice little floater with the left hand, his natural side. Man, as Pressy setting his teammates up, Ross with the tough catch, and he turns it over. Here's Muhammad in transition where he's so tough. What the foul? Browner lost. 
Johnson. This is the best I've seen the Bruins play this year. A really good team. Javon Mahomes with the right hand. in the open court. Great look underneath for Powell. And that's what you're talking about. Muhammad, defensive rebound. Bruins want to push again. It's Drew in transition. Anderson, shot, fake, score.
Shot block for the Bruins. Here comes UCLA. Adams, a great shooter. First three of the game for UCLA. Who has done just fantastic, and his team is winning. Final seconds of the shot clock. Drew scores. This has got to be so inspirational for basketball fans here in Los Angeles. Gets in the paint, turns his back, then acts as the pivot player. Right, right back, Shabazz Mohamed. The answer is Drew picks it clean for Pressy. Drew to Mohamed, and he missed the dunk, but Travis Ware finishes. Up and down action, and all Frank Hinton for Zoe can do is call a timeout. He may be in for the rest of the way, and he'll be better off for it. Travis Ware from outside. Travis Ware feeling so confident tonight. I think there's something. Three fouls now. Bowers has three fouls, so that's a concern for Frank Hayes. Well, David Ware gets the touchdown now.
things we've never seen before tonight. And they mostly like worked. It. Experiment. Drew draws a foul. Does Frank Hape even bring back Alex Oriol? The way the team is playing right now, and with, with Ross coming in and just doing a magnificent job. I mean, you look at Ross, number 33. Just what a body. What a physique. This guy is just an absolute talent. Just picture perfect package of everything. Yeah, he's got a great personal story. Both of his parents in the Navy when he grew up, so he moved all around the country. Within eight different states, sort of developed a personal toughness along the way. He's a big part of this Tigers team. That snaps the run. Bruins, though, still down by seven. About four minutes to go. Bruins were down so big to Texas. That game was over. The Larry Drew brought it back. Will Magic can beat again. Oh, oh. Can't stick a fork in it. That would have been another assist for Hobbit in transition. Bruins are not going away. Shabazz Mohammed's got 20 now. does have the ball and we've already talked about this tonight Bill but it does sort of bring back memories of 1995 NCAA tournament an all-time classic Bruins and Tigers. Ty is empty up against it down by one UCLA second round of the NCAA tournament coast to coast five Tigers trying to get stop and nobody is going to shut down Tyus Eddie who walks like a giant on the land he's not smoking like a leaf in the stream the Bruins on their way to their 11th national championship. Tyus Edney, whose back is to us there, is on the Bruins bench. Third season as UCLA's director of operations, one of the great point guards in the history of this program. As the Bruins head coach talks to this young UCLA team. Pressure situation, no timeouts remaining, 26.9 seconds to go. They do have the ball, but down two. Larry Drew, get in the paint. Keep your guys, particularly Shabazz Muhammad, moving off the ball. Don't have the guy who's going to be dribbling. Look for his own shot. Create for somebody else. You got good finishers out there. You got Adams. You got Kyle Anderson. The Ware Brothers and Muhammad, whichever one we're going to put in right here. The key is going to be Larry Cruz getting into the paint area early enough. Not wait. Is in the bonus. Keep that in mind. 
Wright foul in the last two minutes. Well, that's a good point. It puts you immediately in. And that's why the NBA has the rule, and they don't have that in college basketball. There's team foul number four. They can still do it two more times here. Modernization, standardization, logicalization, and rationalization of the rules, please. Get the ball in down, get going up the court. Powers will get fouled here, 5.9 seconds. So UCLA, in essence, has taken it from 10 seconds remaining down to under six seconds remaining. Still one more foul to give, and it looks like Ben Allen wants to do it. Well, this is remarkable. Pressy with the catch, and they get the foul. Pressy hits the deck hard, and Frank Haynes is going nuts on the sideline. Pressy's still down. Inbound pass up the court at the back cut. Now what is the ruling here? Well, you have to make a play on the ball. I think Jordan Adams did. The officials are allowed to take a look at the monitor if they think that could be a flagrant one foul. Frank Hayes sure thought it was. We've had a lot of John Wooden maxims. And the one that applies here when everybody thinks alike, nobody thinks. The officials still talking about this. And they're not going to go to the monitors. So they're satisfied that was not a flagrant foul. Now Frank Hayes will use his final timeout. That's it for UCLA. They can't give any more fouls. So, in essence, the Tigers have 4.6 seconds in the half court to get a look to win the game. In real essence, we can get back to play basketball. So this is the replay here. Graham, as she's going to the basket. to grab the jersey. I don't think Adams did that. The question is whether he made a true play on the ball. Frank Hayden did not think so. Some controversy at the end of what has been a fantastic game. Controversy. We love it. Makes for good television, that's for sure. First, Hayden did go the Hall of Famer when we need him. 88 UCLA ended up committing four fouls in a span of about six seconds. The next one would be free throws for the Tigers. Nobody has a timeout, but that arrow does favor UCLA. And you got to figure, Bill, the game, the night that John Pressley was here in the final five seconds, all has to be in his hands. By the way, Sports Center up next here on ESPN2. Cowboys Redskins, big game this weekend. The Clippers going for their 16th straight win. Thompson with the heat and ball that they work. John Pressley has been five. I'm sure they'll have some highlights for this game as well.
decision making here. A bobble on the ball, kicks it off his own knee there, then forces up a very difficult shot with Oriaki standing wide open by himself underneath the basket. Pressing never even given a chance to make a play to win this big game. So Phil Pressing still has basketball to play and maybe a little fatigue starting to set in. Maybe some disappointment for the Tigers who had a pretty big lead in the final few minutes. UCLA went on the run. Pressy, 18 assists, school record, the all-time college basketball record in a single game, 22 shared by three others. With five more minutes to go, Pressy's got a chance for that one. Can you remember when you were 20 years old? I remember it. Were you ever tired? No I didn't get tired you very doing. easily. I maybe, didn't think so. Maybe more disappointment now, for Phil Pressy. I know you're tired of me, but we got a game here. Not at all. Where else would we want to be than here in Westwood tonight? There's a Oriaki. He's got four fouls. He's been sitting out for a seeming eternity. Is he going to be able to get anything going here? This is the guy Ross. He's been
now. And at least he'll make Missouri earn it at the free throw line. So the stockings not preventing the cramping. Missed the second Missouri ball up by one. Can Pressy get into the painted area? He did and kicked it back out. Browns three off iron. Kyle Anderson rebound. I like that offensive style though. Get in the paint. Draw the defense and then that rotation up from the baseline and that right wing over there. Drew, a little stutter step move. Now he's got the isolation against the bigger Bowers. Can he take advantage of the mismatch? Anderson did not want to shoot the outside shot. A lot of hesitation, a lot of pump faking. Somebody's got to be a servant. Drew into the lane, Mohammed. Three! Attacks Ross, no good, but a foul. Foul against the Bruins. It'll be Ross at the free throw line to try to tie it. Shabazz Muhammad. Just the perfect spot. Bruins draw this one up magnificently. They run it across all the way down. They penetrate with Kyle Anderson, who kicks it out, and the perfect rhythm, the perfect stroke. Missed free throws, missed layups, turnovers, missed wide open jumpers. Missouri in their anthracite uniforms. Rock solid at the line for <laughs> Ross. <laughs> I don't know, the anthracite looking like a, a gray, gloomy mood that Missouri is not able to pull this one out. About a 10 second difference. Shot clock, game clock, Bruins ball up by one after Ross made one of two at the line. Pressy backing off Drew. His own defense here. Somebody better stay on Shabazz Muhammad. He's been the key man in overtime. Shot clock at five. Drew, Travis Ware, good! UCLA call time. The Bruins will set up some defense. The Tigers will set up offense. Huge night for the Ware brothers. Three point UCLA lead. Fantastic use of the clock. Execution of the flash post from the weak side. Ware just stepping right in there and turning over with Oriaki on the bench. With Bowers not having a big defensive effort tonight. Criswell injured. Very, very tough 
circumstances right now for Missouri. So in case you're just joining us, final seconds of regulation. Jordan Adams scored to tie it. A controversial play. Missouri wanted a flagrant foul. No flagrant foul. So with 4.6 seconds, the Tigers really never got a good look off. That heave by Bell didn't go. And that meant overtime. In overtime, Shabazz Muhammad, the heralded freshman, a couple of threes, and Travis Ware to put the Bruins up by three with 12.1 seconds to go. Unlikely heroes tonight. The Ware brothers, their best game I've ever seen them play. Ross, Ernest Ross comes in fantastic. But now, with one play to go, you've got to have the three. What's the foul situation? Both teams Both have committed teams, nine they're fouls. Out, they're out of fouls, okay. That means two free throws for a shooter if a foul is committed. It's UCLA is going to foul to prevent a three-point attempt, which could tie this game. And that's a really big question. Some college coaches do not want to play it that way. We'll see what Ben Allen thinks. Missouri's got some three-point well, shooters. There's been a number of things that I haven't understood here tonight. Bowers is a good three-point shooter. Is a big man. Jabari Brown's got a nice shot from the outside. We've seen Ernest Ross. They get Jankovic back in the game. He's an excellent outside shooter. Missouri in this game, 12 for 26. They've shot a good percentage from the outside. Don't waste time and don't over dribble. Keep the ball moving. Make UCLA have to gamble. Bruins, a little bit of pressure. Final 10 seconds. Pressing. Long three. No good. Rebound. Bowers has it. Bowers has to heave it up. Come 